The common misconception is that art and design is something for entertainment, something that can be practiced as a hobby, whereas the reality is that artists and designers and creative practitioners at large give back and contribute immensely to our lives. At this very moment, the cell phone you're holding, the clothes you're wearing, the car you drove in, the chair you're sitting on, the room you're part of, they're all owing to the contributions of artists and designers who, not just these elements and components that I mentioned, but in every which way, constantly doing something which shape our lives in every day. Specifically, contemporary art is something which, unlike its uh, predecessor, uh, modern art, contemporary art followed modern art, and contemporary art is much more about everyday and tan tangible realities, and in, it contributes, it, it engages wider audience. And on that note, I would like to share with you that in the last two decades, there are at least 25 to 30 internationally renowned contemporary artists who are not that well known within Pakistan have been changing the perception of the country in their own way on global arena, in the art world of glo global arena. Contemporary artists, not just an artist and designers, they do fun serve the utilitarian function, but contemporary artists, who we often believe that deal with aesthetics only, they do contribute to new ideologies, they give new ideas that, that, that lines through other disciplines of life as well. In my own practice, I use my practice and, and, and making images and objects as, as a fine artist who developed his practice aligned with new tools of new media. I learned through my practice various uh, ways of looking at how, as a person from third world or as a society from the global south, can find a way forward. So I, through my practice, I learned, through my practice, I learned that it's not the usually two things that we find refuge in. One, we follow in the footsteps of the developed, or we find refuge in the stylistic conventions of the romantic past. Especially if we have a splendid past behind us, so it's very easy to fall into that trap. But both in that, in that sense, we'll always remain in the past. And, 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 and if we follow into the footsteps of the, of the developed, we will always be behind. So I believe that a way forward for the, for, for the people in the global south, in the so-called third world countries, is perhaps to find, think afresh and find new legacies and new trajectories as a, as, as a way forward. So in my own practice as to how I dealt with it as an artist from this region, I can just show you a couple of examples. This is one of my work from year 2002 when I shifted from paint to digital media and I created a portrait of a Mughal emperor, something that is expected from us as an artist outside Pakistan and within the Pakistan as well, that this is what we are supposed to create. What you see is images of billboards, and an immediate reality in your surroundings from that time. Similarly, often not just the West or, or people outside, even we within the country, we see ourselves with an exotic lens. So this work called Red Carpet questions our ways of looking at us ourselves with an Orientalist lens, and while accepting and simultaneously accepting and rejecting various uh, stereotypes surrounding that. Similarly, next work called Dislocation Series, which is comprising of 24 hours in the life of a location, which is then produced as a gigantic postcard image, uh, something which looks apparently frozen in time, uh, nostalgic like a postcard, is actually about uh, documenting and, and stating that uh, even it's a society which may have maybe living various times and eras all at the same time, is contemporary in its own way. So similarly, uh, there's a work called Desperately Seeking Paradise that I produced in 2008. When you first encounter the work, it looked like a minimalist geometric abstract sculpture. 
something from the west and then when you move around it you discover that the it unfolds into a very different kind of narrative where you can the the piece starts looking like from another angle looks start looking like chunk of a high rise building brought into the gallery space which is reflecting its surroundings other high rise buildings but these high rise buildings the verticality of these high rise buildings is actually comprising of horizontal view of the facades of lahore from 2008 so in a way referencing or hinting uh, this misconception that uh, the cause of conflict is religion the work references obviously 911 and 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 often it's believed that the reason religion is the cause of uh, conflict whereas is the sheer unevenness of economic unevenness that exists in the world uh, symbolized through this horizontal and vertical landscape is the is the real uh, cause in that sense so the work unfolds in these various uh, chapters of the story so with these ideas i was given an opportunity 3 uh, 3 and a half years ago i was invited to create the an artistic intervention around the uh, the building of parks and pavilion at the dubai expo 2020 in a way that it is able to pull the crowd so this was the original building and i was supposed to do some magic around it so that it can attract the crowd coming there in large numbers and then competing with the likes of UK US Saudi UAE with all their resources so i was interested with the job of actually transforming architecture into art so i came up with something like this i i believe most of you have seen this image i was expected to create macro and micro image the something that you've seen my in my practice my own expectations were the same as well but i took a slightly different route uh, i based my work on this idea of diversity that exist in pakistan uh, we are perhaps the most diverse nation on this planet uh, not just uh, climatically geographically but racially uh, in terms of faith and i always believe that something which may sound chaotic to others uh, and, and something which may sounds like a reason for conflict is something can be turned into our strength only if that diversity brought into or put together in in some kind of harmonious order so what is happening here in this work if you look at the close up units each unit this rhombus shape looks like they all identical but they actually not they are 24000 units only fractionally different in micro millimeters from each other and then of course you see a larger uh, differences when you step back and then you see the rainbow of colors representing this seasonal and climatic and Uh, racial and ethnic diversity that we have so my whole drive while making this work was this idea that we have done people uh, contemporary artists like myself have shown works and represented uh, pakistan in 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 the sphere of art world museums and and in exhibitions at various venues but this is an opportunity to help change perception of pakistan so i took it as a challenge and and uh, i hope uh, and, and the the kind of response we got both from within the country outside the country and and the pakistanis in the diaspora who really felt really proud and happy so as an artist this was the first time i knew that we are contribute as artists we contribute in our own ways uh, in the sphere of the art world through achievements or accolades such as awards or you know reviews and all but this is the first time as an artist i learned that i can contribute in another way as well it's this is the first time i learned that my art can make people feel proud and happy thank you